Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought it's the beginning of the week and what better way to start a week than with another another tutorial. My what's in the bag video went down uh, well last time. Please, if you have not checked that out, please check it out. It's, um, it's a pretty useful video. But today I want to talk about putting. Probably the element of the game that can pretty much make or break your round. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I have struggled with putting, I felt like I am unbeatable with putting, and I think everyone goes through that in their time. So this isn't a video about giving you an infallible technique that's going to let you sink every, every putt from 30, 40, 50 yards, nothing like that. What this is, is just a hints and tips um, to help you focus up on your putting. Maybe you'll take one or two of them into your game, maybe you won't take any, maybe you'll take all of them in. But it's, it's just there as a kind of a little help, a little guide, just, just to get you guys thinking more about, about your putting, how you're putting and how you're lining things up. Um, I'm going to chunk the video up into a, into a few parts. Um, and I think first of all, and it's a myth I want to debust because everyone says it doesn't matter what putter you use. Now, I tend to disagree. Now, the putters have no stats. Everyone knows that. Nothing like that. But they do have a visual impact on how you line up your putt. Now you'll see I use a very standard putter, silver, boring, thin, nothing. But what I find with this putter, if I was on the right one, this putter, it just doesn't get in my way. I mean, I've used the candy cane and I couldn't putt the toffee with it. Um, the fat bottom ones, again, I didn't like them. It just, it, I don't know, it just, it just didn't give me a pleasant view. So what I will say, guys, is if you're picking a putter, pick one that just doesn't distract you from what you're doing. Pick one. Keep it simple is my best is my best view. Keep it simple. Make sure you can see the ball. Make sure you can see the line. You're not getting distract distracted by weird stuff. Um, that flamingo was literally impossible to putt with. Um, I did try. And honestly, whilst there's not a lot in it, it will help if you don't mess around too much with your putter and anything that makes your view a bit weird. I mean, all of these for me would just be distracting, a little bit off-putting. Um, I don't know, just not for me. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. I see people play them and they play very well, but as a starter for 10 guys, pick a putter that you like, that you like the feel of and stick with it and use it and it'll become pretty handy for you. So that's tip one, do not, <laughs> Do not dismiss what your putter looks like. Okay, let's move into the training facility and I'll start talking to you about other elements. And I think the first the first piece I want to touch on really with you is power. Um, and again, there's a lot of hints and tips you can go into in terms of the power um, when you're in a putting. So let's find out. I think it's under practice. Putting. Set as a snipe, so we're on one four four greens. So these are the kind of the medium speed greens. Um, you get the slow greens, which are like one nineteen down as far as one oh nine, I think, and then you'll get the the faster greens. And we'll talk a little bit more about green speeds um, as we go through this video. So let's let's touch on power. So for me, if it's forty one foot to the pin. The, the game does a pretty good job of setting you up for your power on flat surfaces. Where it becomes a problem is on the hills. So I think if it's relatively flat or a couple of inches up or down, where the game normally puts you is normally okay. Now the rule I, I live by then outside of where the game puts you is I will treat each inch as a foot. So if this was, let's say, 41 foot and five inches down then i would take five feet off that and bring the cursor back to 36 feet so every every inch is roughly a foot if you use that in your mind it's a good first tip in terms of how to how to line up your putt and certainly for downhill putts if they're a foot downhill you want to at least be taking between 10 and 12 feet off that putt at least and that's and and also don't let your eyes deceive you i know it seems weird and the game is quite mechanical but sometimes things are more downhill than others <laughs> i know that sounds weird to say but yes if you start where this lines just up 42 foot 41 foot it's giving you a foot pass just to make sure you hit it with enough power 
that seems sensible to me. Um, again, the next tip I want to talk about is know your backswing. Now, my backswing, I know sometimes, depending on how far from the hole I am, will depend on how accurate I am in hitting perfects. So at the minute, I'm, what, 41 feet? And that's quite a long way back for me to be from the hole. And I know that I'll likely hit a gray fast. Let's, let's have a look. There it is, gray fast. Ignore the swing line. But that was me trying to catch the bite. So I know that. So in knowing that, you can adjust for that. Let's just put that in. So again, it's not massive adjustments. And again, if it, it it's looking at the down and uphill. So if you're putting downhill, and you know the further away you are, the, like, the more likely you are to hit the green fast. Then take a bit more, take a bit more of your distance off. Yeah, if you're going uphill and you know you like to hit a green fast, it'll probably help you because the game normally doesn't set you up um, as accurately as you want it to. So, again, know know your backswing. Know if you like to find a biting point. You'll notice I play about the power bar off. So that tip is pointless for those who play with the power bar on because you should be able to hit perfects every single time. Um, and if you're missing them, then obviously, you know, that's you, that's just bad luck, really. But most of the times, if you've got the if you've got the power bar on, you'll be fine. But in terms of in terms of myself, I play without it. I know that if I'm within 10 or 20 feet, I'm likely to hit a white perfect. If I'm outside of that, it gets much harder for me to stop to stop in time. And that's just that's just me. So. I think. <laughs> Another top tip for me in distance is don't, so I know here, I'll pull it back to 115 feet. I will have a look roughly at the lines. This is this is not going to be a breaker, right? So I've pulled it back. The reason I pulled it back is I know I'm going to hit this hard. So I want this to be a lag putt, right? I do not want to go past the hole. So if I pull this in just a couple more feet, as it's relatively flat, try to hit the biting point. I didn't, again because I know my power won't, but this then shouldn't fly past the hole. <laughs> or oh, you just make a 115 foot putt. <laughs> so we won't even know if that was going to fly past the hole. But hey, look, at least that proves, guys. I know what I'm doing. I just put one in for 115 foot like it was nothing. <laughs> right. So I guess the, the tip here is know your swing, know your power, um, and that's just from playing it. And if you've got the power bar on, great. But just be mindful. So this is 45 and two inches down. So let's let's bring it into 43, what I said, a foot for an inch. And let's see if I can hit a white perfect here, how close we get it. And again, black fast. And again, dead in the middle. But I wasn't going to travel too far by. So let's have a look. 39, five inches up. It set me up for 48. So let's hit this at the 44 based on my my previous maps I just showed you. If I could hit a white perfect, it would be useful. There we go. Now that's uphill, and I fully intended that to fall short. And that's because the uphill parts, as I say, they always need a little bit more. So for that, what the game set you up with is probably, probably about right. So this is set me up with 48. Another perfect. And there we go, it rolls a few feet by. So, like I say, every if you treat every foot as an inch, if you're downhill, definitely bring it back more. If you're uphill, the game is usually pretty accurate with it. The other top tip, which a few of the players do, is actually to know exactly how uphill it is. Bring the cursor back to the hole. So, this is 39 and is 5 foot up. Sometimes, if you're way past and there's a big drop-off or a big hill behind the hole where it's telling you to aim, it can really impact that. So another top tip on your power is to bring it to the hole just to check exactly, is it exactly five inches up? Then if it is, great. Hit it the distance it wants you to hit it. That's another grey one. As I said, 40 foot out, I hit in grey, but it'll go in. Oh, lipped out. So 
So what you've noticed, probably noticed me doing as well for those longer putts is I'm actually looking for the biting point. So you would have seen me pull it back a couple of times, let it go forward, pull it back, let it go forward until I feel a vibration. Once I feel that vibration, I know roughly where it is. Now, I don't do this on all my putts. This is a good tip if you don't have the putt power on, certainly in TGC Tours when you won't have it on. It's a good tip just to find that vibration a few times and you can hit the white perfect. Now, that all that is pretty much a... Um, a pretty useful tool to have in your armory. Um, I don't believe in the practice swings, but just to find that biting point, just a couple of times, just a few pullbacks, just to know where it is on the screen, get your finger used to it, feel it out, and just make sure you're comfortable with what you're doing. And my last and probably most useful tip in the power is it doesn't matter, guys. There's no swing tempo here, right? So it does not matter how slow you pull this stick back. I can pull this back there. Then this is me going very slow in my fingers now. It does not matter how slow you pull it back. At all. So use, use all your patience. Pull it back as slow as you want, as long as it's in a straight line. And then smash it forward. And away you go. Now, that's going to be massively under hit because I didn't have enough power in the club to actually get up there. This will give you a nice, this is a better view. So pull it back really slowly. Find that biting point. Find that biting point. You can stop on the biting point if you want and push it forward. And again, don't be afraid to hold the biting point. People continue to pull things back. But if you hold that biting point, so where it bites here, I'm holding it and then pushing it forward, and I will get the perfect power. So that's another good tip for you. Doesn't matter how fast or slow you bring it back, whatever you're comfortable with, to find that biting point. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to, to talk about. There's probably one last bit, and you'll see um, a few players do this. When you're this close to the hole, there's a bit of a, a line. A lot of players push the club out, certainly if you're a few yards back. In fact, let's move a few yards back. Um, let's move a few yards back if I can and what they do is they push it up a bit and what they're doing there is they're overpowering it to take the break out of it now you'll notice that didn't turn and you're just overpowering your putt to take the break out of the putt which is quite a useful thing to do um, if you've got a little bit of break a lot of people try to play the, play the breaks on those short putts where there really is no need just move the cursor forward a few a few feet not anything dramatic and just use the extra power to take out the break um it can be handy and it is useful um so just make sure you you don't go crazy <laughs> with it but yeah use that extra power to to remove the break you'll see a few a few of the top players do it quite a lot they overpower quite a lot of their putts from those sort of distances, certainly within 10 feet, just to minimize the amount it's going to break. It is a risk, and it's a risk-reward, but once you get used to it, it's a pretty handy technique. All right, you would have seen me adjusting and making quite a few of those putts, so let's talk about what I'm looking at when I'm when I'm adjusting for a putt, and let's call this um, the line. So trying to pick the line you're going to do. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to talk you through it. There is a method that quite a few people use. Um, I think it's an old hippie Stein method where they count. So what I mean by count is they will assign each moving line a number. And so this putt, nothing's moving. So there'll be zero all the way up. And then they'll hit the putt um, based on, they'll, sorry, adjust taps based on how many numbers. Now, I'm not gonna talk you through that. It's not a way I use. I haven't got time to be going into cams and counting lines. I just prefer to use the visual aids and just look at how I think the putt's gonna break. So let's get it back to a normal putt. I did that one-handed then, apologies. Need to focus up. So let's, let's, let's talk about the lines. So ig ignoring the counting stuff and feel free if you wanna use that method, but there'll still be some pieces in this, in this choosing your line that you can still use. First thing first, and I don't always remember to do this myself, check the green speeds. So top right of your screen, you'll see this is the 144. As I said at the start of the video, this is medium green speeds. 
Um, you'll have medium fast around the 170s. Um, you'll have then fast then around, um, sorry, medium fast around 163, fast around 170s, and then very fast will be your 187. Um, and then likewise, you'll have the slower greens, which will be 125, 109. Now, there is a weird thing with this. You'd think the faster greens would move more with the lines. But actually, the slower greens with the slower line movements, your ball will tend to move more with the lines. Um, it, it's, an interesting, <laughs> it's an interesting one to get your brain around. But if you think about it, your ball's moving slower, so it's going to take more of the, the smaller moderate breaks. On the faster greens, your ball's moving faster, so it won't take as much of the fast breaks. However, what you'll notice is on the faster greens, the lines will move fast, and you'll still need to put the same amount of break on you would if it was the, the, normal, the normal greens. Probably confusing the crap out of you, but basically, remember, slower greens equals you need to give a little more for the break, faster greens you probably need a little less for the break so that's that's pretty much standard again when we're talking about breaks so this is how much the ball will turn based on the lines moving if you're putting uphill it breaks way less than if you're putting downhill um no idea why that is but downhill putts seem to break a lot lot more than uphill putts so again you need to legislate for that when you're picking your line I also like to use not just the, obviously the white beads that are moving, I like to use these green lines as markers. Um, so if I am, let's get a bit closer. If I'm say 10 feet away, let's get, see if I can get a bit closer. That's 20 feet, so let, let's say 20 feet. So if I'm 20 feet away and I can see they're all slow moving lines and all within within this first marker really, you know you are not aiming anywhere. If you're aiming out here, you've got problems. So you literally will be between here and this line. Now, if you're 40 feet away with lines moving like this, you're probably between the next box, somewhere in the next box. And likewise, 60 feet, somewhere in the next box. Now, if these were all moving a lot faster, these beads, again, from 10 feet, you're probably not outside this line, as long as these are green beads. So what I mean with green lines, you can see up here, these are yellow and then these are red. So if you're within the green beads and moving probably between zero and 15 feet, you're not normally outside this box, this line, unless, unless they're moving really, really fast. And we'll come on to that. If they're yellow and moving 10 feet, you're gonna be in this second box. And if they're red, though, you could possibly be in this third box within 10 and 15 feet. So just bear that in mind. Between the 10 and 15 feet range, green lines, you're in here, yellow lines, you're in here, red lines, you're in the third box. That's a very good, simple method, providing you're only 16 feet away. If, as I said, if it's between 0 and 15, between 15 and 30, you're going to hit the next box. Between 30 and 45, you're hitting the next box. That's for green. So again, for yellow, it'll be further again so just 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 bear that in mind i don't think a lot of people give enough read the other piece i'm going to say about picking your line is let the beads move and fill the screen so you see the ones on the left go out and then they start coming back in on the right now what this does is if you give them enough time and you watch the beads you can kind of see the line you see that first bead that's coming now that's the first one that passes the hole then you want to check where the next beads come in now they're moving pretty slow so, and this is, this is, this is the weirdest tip, but I also look around two lines back. So see this line here, you'll see the bead will appear. And when the first bead crosses the hole, this bead is on this marker. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but I like to use that, that as a line, that as a gauge. And it just kind of helps to read the putt. It's very odd. Takes a bit of getting used to, but always look beyond the hole as well, just to see where the beads are coming in. Now this should be, it's uphill, so it probably won't break as much. I think this to me in my head is, I haven't given this enough break. But let's, let's see.
boom, straight in the middle. I'm hoping you, you kind of saw what I did there. <laughs> it's, um, we'll go through it again. If I can get myself within 20 feet, this one isn't moving, so let's pick a different spot. Um, let's try here. Not moving. Where is it moving on this hole? By now. All right, let's try here. So, very little movement. Now, another bit I want to touch on. The movement at my feet is more than the movement at the hole. So this is this is another key little hint or tip for you to take away. Is that when you strike the ball, you're obviously hitting the ball harder than when it approaches the hole, right? The ball's moving faster off your club. So it won't take as much break as it will if it was breaking more up here. So these ones, whilst it will take them, it's not going to take them as much as if these lines were nearer the hole. So the easiest way to see this is see this line here. I'm following this with my eye. So it'll come in next. And when that crosses that line, for me, the break, I don't know why it's got me hitting it so hard. But let's put it back there. So for me, the break is very minimal. There's one at my feet. And there's these two moving. There's nothing moving behind. So I got the three lines on the screen now. I think the break is around there. I've hit that too hard, but it should still drop. So that's that's a few of them. I've also noticed when I move sometimes the, the game moves a little differently and i'll try and get this we'll take this out onto the course in a minute but sometimes you'll see when you move in adjusting for a putt at some point and normally it's on the the really the really really dodgy putts which have loads of break you'll notice the movement does a little jump at some point now it's not going to do it here but i'll try and demonstrate it on the course that is usually a good read that you found the point to hit the ball which is odd um but it is so but we'll, we'll cover that more when i'm on the course so what i say so let, let's summarize right i don't do the counting i use my eye i look at the beads moving a few a few lines behind the holes and obviously i look i let them come in and sometimes you can see the natural gradient from just watching the beads as they all align so please wait for the beads to come in from the right to the left or the left to the right depending on which way to break in use use these lines the parallel lines as well as well as the beads um as i said if they're slow moving you're going to be in this box if they're fast moving you're going to be in these two boxes um depending on how far away you are so please do that um remember i said breaks breaks at the start of your feet don't as much break as the end so just always allow, especially if you've got a double breaker, always allow for the end breaks to break more. Um, it's a good hint there. Um, and that's that's about it in terms of how I line things up. It's a lot of visual and it's a lot of your own your own kind of feel for a putt. Um, the last bit I will say <laughs> in picking your line, don't change your mind. I have changed my mind. I've gone, no, actually, this one's a bit more, and I've missed the putt. Don't change your mind. Pick your line, hit your putt, and hopefully that putt drops right in the middle of the cup, just like that. So, okay, it's easy in here, right? These aren't that difficult putts. Um, so let's uh, let's talk on the one last point I want to I want to cover, which is swing playing, and then we'll get we'll get out on the course. We will get out on the course. So you'll see a couple of times I'll be saying, oh, my swing plane's all over the place. Always just, I always try to hit it straight. So my swing plane, and I'll talk about this if I do a swing video, it's weird. I use a PS5 and the vibration point's a bit off, but I always seem to try and pull down to seven o'clock and push up to one o'clock and I get a dead straight line like that. So I wasn't lining it up. I just wanted to show you my swing plane. Down to one, up to seven, dead straight line. That has always been the case for me on the PS5 controller. I feel like I'm putting it down on an angle. I'm not. I'm hitting it dead straight. 
here we go this is an interesting one so two foot down so that would be 79 feet you'd hit that looking at the beads they're moving at my feet they're not moving up here okay this is just a lag putt in the game you'd call this you're two foot downhill you want to get this up there but you don't want to blast past the hole now these greens are moving faster but they're still normally to be in the first box but because i'm so far away i'm going just outside the second box straight line again down to seven o'clock one o'clock i've pulled that in lag putt doesn't fly by literally lands perfect distance Boom. now what i have done and it's not recommended is that if you think you're aiming and you've aimed here and you think oh crap actually you started swinging and sometimes like if not adjust my swing you think oh crap i need this to go more left you can try and push it left yourself i tried to push that left then and failed show you how hard it is to do but if you try to purposely push it in the direction so i push that one left see how it curled left that is a useful technique if you last minute think oh no i've misjudged it then just try a little push so this one i have i think oh no i haven't given this enough break let's push it out to the left hopefully it picks up more of the break still going to go too far right but i cracked it slightly it's not recommended it's only for those times when you've committed to the swing and you think damn try to pick your line first um, but you can purposely push it in a direction. And what you may or may not have noticed, and the last thing I'm going to touch on is, this is sometimes where you'll get the kind of people who who sometimes, and not always, they are genuine, but sometimes ghost breaks can come because of your swing plane. And people don't always recognize it. There are genuine ghost breaks in this game, do not get me wrong. And it's usually on your backswing. So a backswing down to the right, will send the ball left and if you power it as well so if i do a backswing down to the right and empower it it's going to absolutely knacker your shot now it's not always the case with ghost breaks ghost breaks do exist but you can see a dodgy swing plane and overpower will just change the break even if the brakes go in that way, it will change it. Um, it's not. It usually there are there are some actually really really annoying ghost breaks in the game, but sometimes it can be a swing plane. So before you start shouting, "Oh my God, ghost break!" Just check your swing plane um, and see if it wasn't that first. Because sometimes if you push it against against the brake and you you overpower it, a great power, it can actually take the brake out of it. And the last real tip before we take it onto the course and I talk you through a few shots is learn to adapt, right? So as I said earlier, I know that if I'm over 40 feet, I'm likely to hit a gray fast. So I will take some distance off or add some distance on depending on where I am and how the putt looks. Likewise, if I know I'm going to do that, I might give it a bit more break. Um, so just, just always adapt. If you're reading the green speeds, if you're on a 187 green and you keep missing all the green, all the putts low, then give it a little bit more break. Don't keep aiming in the same place and expecting the same thing to happen. If you keep missing them high, likewise, give it a little less break. So don't don't just keep doing what you're always doing, right? Play with them. In the first couple of holes, you should be able to get used to the, the speed of the green um, on any course, and you should be able to get your putts close. But certainly, if you're if you're if you're within 10 feet, you should be making the putts. Anything outside of 10 feet, you want to just make sure. You're not destroying your putts. You're not three putting. So you want to make sure you just give it enough to get there. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. So that's that's kind of my main hints and tips. There's probably been a lot in there. I will try to put some some words up on the screen for you as well as, as I go on through it so you can find the sections you need. But I think there's four bits. So pick your club. Make sure you know the power you're going to hit it. Choose the line and stick to it. Um don't change your mind make sure your swing plane is is pretty straight as i said the seven to one o'clock tends to work for me um keeps things pretty straight and then adapt make sure you you utilize your brain the way greens have been playing for you how you've been playing and you will make way more putts
way more putts. As I said, it's not infallible, but you will make more. So let's get on the course. Let's get let's have some trickier putts. That is not fun in there. So let's let's get out. Riviera will do. I'll just try and get on a few greens and see if we can make a few putts live, as it were. And I'll try and pick some difficult spots. Provided my game's up to scratch. I've not played for a while. As I say, guys, if you're enjoying this video, please do Welcome like, PGA subscribe. Um, I will try and do a video on... The Riviera Country Club to tee one up. Let's put that first drive in the fairway and take it from there. What do you say? On how I actually play the game. A few hints and tips. That's not going to be good. Yeah, that's not uh, fun. That's right, not going to be... Here, deep in the spinach. Let's get it over there. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a long that's putt. A this is a good start. Putt. Right. Now, Ooh, this is, uh, up to be you are 71 people. feet away, so you'd have to put this um, in TGC Tours or any society. 75 feet or plus is normally the non-putting. So, it's already set me up at 114 feet, and it's two foot up. So, I think, I think I'm think i probably going to bring that in a tiny bit. Now, not the full... Normally, I'd say bring it in 24, so 90 to 95. But I'm going to bring this into 105 just because of the distance away it is. Because it's going to slow it down because you're traveling two feet over a longer distance. Now, if you look, and this is the best way I like to look, certainly from this distance putt, you see it's moving right to left, right to left, right to left, all the way. It's pretty much green and um, movement. So you gonna be at least the third now did you see the way that's that moved then so i know that this is roughly the right spot did you see the funny movement i can't replicate it but it was what i was talking about before i know this is roughly the right spot now this is just a lag putt right so i've gone what have i gone four lines outside the hole now i try and find my biting points which i've not found yet there it is and away we go. It's going to be grey because I know I hit things grey fast. Hence, I bought it in a bit from where the game set me up. And that is a pretty good lag putt. Right, let's finish this hole out. So, as I said, brought that in a bit from the where the game set me up. If I hit that 114 feet, I would have been miles past the hole. All right? So I bought that in 10 feet from where the game put me. Just because I know from that distance, I tend to grey fast things. Well, that won't do, will it? I don't know why I can't hit fairways okay, on this course. Here on the That's all right. Let's lag that up there. Give myself another nice putt. Here's a putt from 19 so, 19 feet. feet, 6 inches down. It set me up for 16 feet. So I'll just pull that in probably another inch to 14. So that feels about right now you see these are kind of yellow lines so i know yellow lines i'm going to be in this second box right as i said i'm within the 10 to 20 feet range or even the 0 to 15 10 to 20 so this is going to turn now 144 green so i know they turn more than 187 now what i'm looking for here is weirdly i'm looking at this back one and where it comes in and it comes in here for me so that is where i'm going to aim at at this 15 foot mark so i want to aim here now this might seem mental but this is how much curl oh this one could drop and i have overdone that i didn't even get that enough a little bit a little bit too hard but you saw once again because i pulled it in i didn't over hit it now this is where i'm going to use the power to take out some of the break this putt's going overpower it hit it straight and the break doesn't take as much so again on that one if i'd hit it where the computer wanted me to without bringing that in i would have gone miles past again i think she's coming in for a landing on the fairway so we'll do a few more this one's about 110 yards from the pin 110. this should stop short with the wind this could be good uh, damn. <laughs> but again, this demonstrates within, within the four feet. See, I push it out to two feet, take out the break, hit it. And in the hole. It's just a way of guaranteeing you, bring your score down. you put them without doing anything stupid. Here we go. Let's stick uh, this one nice and close. Right, to the now, this should be a bit of way away. Bounce right. Come on. 
Right, so we let's, hit every green today. let's chip this right. over here. And here's our second shot on the fourth. And just drop this on in and you'll get a All right, uphill. I'm comfortable with where they've set me up. It's 144 greens. It doesn't look like there's much movement here. I'm watching the three lines come in in front of me and the one at my feet. Now, if you see where they transition past the hole there, so this, this first line, I'll show it again. Where this transitions past, when it gets there. So these back two are moving much faster than that one. So you can see, it's probably going to take three or four cycles now just to get it back to how it was. So this is the original. So where that moves past, you probably want to be aiming around around here and again i'm using this this back line as a bit of a marker for it let's see well, the putt appears to be online nowhere near enough and i had and that if you notice that wasn't the putt line that was my swing line so again i took my concentration off that if you looked at my swing line reverse the video you'll see that was a horrific swing line and again it's all part of putting par four here uh nothing you can't handle i'm sure so uh Let's put it in the fairway and take it from there. Let's get it up there. Okay, we are in the deep stuff currently. Get on the green somewhere. There we go. And I'm purposely playing for these positions, guys, just so we can see. So this is a foot up. Um, I'm quite comfortable. Probably bring that into 65, just so I'm not blasting it past the hole. And again, if you look to the hole, it's actually a little bit more than a foot. Hence, it set you at 70. Um, so... It must start going downhill, as you can see here. It goes downhill. So it's actually a little bit more than a foot to the hole. So I think probably 68 is about right. Now, these beads all seem to be moving relatively slow within this first box. So this, again, is going to be a lag putt. It'd be great if you make it, but if not... So I'm going to go just outside the line. Probably... A cup into the next box. No, that's too much. Just outside, I think, is right. Let's see. No. There. I've hit the power I wanted to. It's just a lag putt up. Oh, Perfect. And there was me doing the thing I told you not to do, guys. I kept adjusting. Okay. I probably had the line until I brought it in a bit. Currently sitting at one under par. Sixth hole coming up. This looks like fun. Might be a little bit Stay on the green. See what happens. Should be a downhill putt from there. 30 feet to the cup. So now these guys, it's telling me to hit a 16 already, but I'm going to bring this right in. And this may seem mad to around 12. Now the lines are breaking up my feet more than they are in front of the hole. So I think this is a perfect place to put the ball. It's going to turn back, but not enough. And you can see my putt line. And it's still, even with me bringing it in that far, it still went right by. You know you're going to have an uphill putt. You can just power these ones through any break. We'll just do the front nine and we'll call it a day there. As I said, guys, these aren't infallible techniques. I'm not here. But there's a few hints and tips in there that may help. They may not. Um, careful of this one fairway bunker make of it what you will sure what's going to happen here but i just want to talk you through my view of of how i approach greens if i can see if i can land it on this green way short of the hole so that should give me a nice one stick a workout to, uh, wow so this is the one where the it's breaking this at the start and at the end in different directions so as i said in my tips these front breaks won't take as much as the back breaks. But there are quite a few more lines breaking right to left and left to right. But I still think I need to aim more left, which seems mad, right? Well, I think these back breaks are going to take me. I think the way it set me up, I'm quite comfortable with the 74 foot up because I want to hit this a bit harder to miss these first few breaks. So now it's all about getting that perfect line and tempo hit that a bit too hard now it's not going to come back as easy as it was if i hit the right 
Just a little too much. And again, power. that's about the power, guys. So I'm not really okay. hitting these things correctly. So 13 feet, three inches up, comfortable with the power it set me up with. Again, green lines. I'm, I'm using this first line because they're moving so fast. I'm using this first line as a base. I think it's potentially going to turn a little bit more than that because it's just outside that line. Boom. Right, well done. So we've been that 10 to 15 feet mark. Sometimes you do have to push it outside if they're moving that fast, which is what I told, to talked about. Yeah, drive Keep some distance off that. Here. Okay, setting up here about 140 to the pin. Let's go here. Stop short. That's a safe shot. difficult putt. Now these are hard to read greens because you can't bloody see a thing. No two ways around. Um, but it's one foot up. If you can't see it, use this cam, which is just triangle and then L2 to drag yourself back. And now there's a few lines moving left to right. Nothing outside this line, right? Even though I'm a distance away. But I think on the line could be the right call on this one. Again, need to get my distance right. Which I haven't been doing. Again, I know I hit it black fast all the time. And that's going to fly by. If I hit that perfect, it would have been good. So there's a lesson again. I'm not listening to my own lessons for you. Because um, I thought I could have hit that one, the old white perfect. But I couldn't. A little black okay, fast. One under for the round. And it went strolling okay, by. Lengthy par four. All right, let's do the last one, guys, and then we'll call it a day. But I'm hoping there's, there's some Setting little tidbits in there. As I said, I think the big part for it for me is don't... If you've got a distance putt, like I've been giving myself quite a few distance putts. Let's put myself over here. If you've got a distance putt, don't... This one's heading a little bit to the left. Well, that'll do for now. Don't always use what what it sets you up with pull it out or push it in so you're not smashing it past the hole um because distance nearly always equates to the game giving you a much longer putt than you actually need now this one let's see if we can make the final one one inch down so i bought it into 29 i think because of the distance i'm away as i said if you're if you're between 15 and 30 feet you're definitely in the second box when it's just green lines how far in the second box is up to you um i tend to use the line it's moving on and well i think it's coming into play and i think it's coming into play here can i hit a perfect i have and i've just again not read that enough okay let's go this one is for par there's a lesson to be in that reading but again i didn't give myself anything bad i didn't leave myself a bad next shot right i just made sure i was okay let's see if we can get up on the green somewhere short let's Flash this one to around here. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's get this out of the first cut. Annoying. Just get on the button. All right, this there we go. Safe car. So, I like the setup here. I don't mind it being that high up. I think. The lines at my feet won't take it as much as the lines nearer, but I think this is moving enough to be on this line. And what you'll notice, guys, a lot of the other times on this game, it's either the line is normally the right... The parallel line is normally the right read. Not always, but it can be quite often. Oh and that one I didn't give enough. And Standard. All right, so look, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully I've given you some hints and tips. What I'm mainly trying to say is just don't do yourself a disservice, right? Make sure you're put in to somewhere you're comfortable. Read the greens, read the lines. Um, try to utilize the technique of 
the the boxes so box one for green box two for yellow box three for red and then depending on the speed of the green and the distance you are away you just keep adding them on and just just go from there just have fun with it get used to it enjoy the game for what it is um you're never going to sink every putt you're never going to make okay second shot you know 40 50 60 foot putts like i've been trying to do you're just going to have to this one might be in a bad place. get used to it and make sure you're not debilitating yourself That's and crippling your rounds. On that one. Uh, the green will do nicely. So these are yellow. This one will be for eagle. Needs to be over here. This is an eagle part. My black fast is going to send that too far, but not far enough. As you've seen, I bought it in, and then you can guarantee move a bit, little one. There we go. Anyway, guys. Have fun out there, enjoy it, make use of that what you will, and I will catch you soon for some more live action, probably TGT calls up next. Enjoy your week all.